Uh, oh, we're recording now. We're recording now. Ah, welcome. Now we're, doing we're, official. we're now we're official. Hello, friends. I'm going to, oh, yeah, I always have to uh, remind myself to jump into the group because we're going live here in the group, in the deep dating group. Uh, my beloved, have you seen, is uh, my woman, my one and only, my betrothed, a fancy word, my future bride. Paige Stewart is joining me today. Hi, Paige. Hi. I'm oh. excited to be here. Oh, my gosh. It's so exciting to have you. You're always a popular ad. <laughs> like, oh, good. We get Paige and David. Or just mm -hmm. to say, we get Paige. <laughs> so <laughs> we're doing a little uh, cross-pollinization today. So this is going to serve as our weekly podcast as well. And, uh, and for the benefit of everyone in the deep dating group. So again, I am David Lee. That is, who is she? I'm Paige Stewart. She's Paige Stewart. We're with Daring Deeply, a coaching practice uh, where we help men, women, and couples uh, get unstuck, discover blockages in life, most notably caused by trauma, and uh, to release into pathways of joy and peace and passion and purpose and all of that. So, so today specifically, we're going to talk about debunking because we love to debunk, don't we, Paige? We love to debunk. Isn't that a great word? Almost everything. <laughs> I love it. I love it. She's, we debunk everything, right? Or reframe. Uh, we're, so, we're, so, we're so diligent and we're so passionate about taking cultural, societal narratives and turning them on their head, not for the sake of being a contrarian, but simply to give others a perspective that we may have fallen into or chosen to follow that has kept us trapped, kept us the back kelped us kelped us kelp words are hard i just said kelp <laughs> seafood on the brain <laughs> ooh, ooh, sushi we should do sushi mm. um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh to anyway back back to the uh, narrative so um to really allow people to make choices that can release them from old ways and breaking negative uh, negative patterns and so we're going to talk about a narrative that has been centuries old, lifetime, forever, is grown men don't cry. Grown men don't cry. The shaming element, ultimately from our perspective, that men are not supposed to show emotion, which is very interesting because so many of our female clients who identify as female will often say he is emotionally unavailable. <laughs> He's emotionally unavailable. Whereas on the other side, right? Men have heard and men have been told not to show emotion, not to cry, not to express, with the exception of a couple of emotions, right, which primarily is laughter and rage. <laughs> and really anything outside of that has been, has been always questioned in so many ways. So we thought we would jump on here and talk a little bit about the expression, the deep expression, the vulnerable expression of tears and what that means and what that brings. And I love that you're on today, Paige, specifically for this, because I know I would love to hear, and I know our audience would love to hear the feminine perspective of when a man cries, what goes on, what goes on inside the feminine, all the emotion, right? And what is she thinking? What is the wounded feminine thinking? What is the healthy feminine thinking, right? And give us a perspective of what does that mean? We'll kind of pepper back and forth. So let me, let me outline there. Let me ask you the question specifically. So what has been your journey? What has been your experience with men in expressing the vulnerable emotions such as tears? Oh my goodness. How much time do we have? Not much time, <laughs> <laughs> but we can do this again and again and again. So, well, the thing that comes to mind is just like you said, so growing up, I didn't experience a whole lot of emotion coming from the masculine characters in my upbringing or in my surroundings, in my life experience. Um, <clears throat> and I just thought that that's what made them strong, right? That's what made them tough. And I've come to learn. And, and in reality, I men expressing emotion and their vulnerability. And even if it comes to tears, that is actually their strength. Like mm. there is great strength in being able to bring yourself to, uh, an element of vulnerability and just like wide open, just like here I am very raw, very real. There is so much power and security 
in that. Mm. And it's taken a lot of work for me to come to that realization because Mm. before, um, when I would see a man express tears or even sadness, or even be down in the dumps, um, instantly, like my alarms start going off on the inside that he's not strong enough to take care of me. He's not strong enough protect me. I need to step up and lead. He needs to just stop being a baby, like shame, 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 a whole bunch of shame. And that was a lot of wounded uh, feminine energy on my behalf too. So lots of trauma, lots of, um, wounded energy, um, mixed with like the culture in which I was raised to kind of allowed me to remain in that space until I was able to find new awareness to grow and elevate from that. Mm. And now find deep appreciation and Mm -hmm. vulnerability and tears and expression from Mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well said. I love the juxtaposition you just, you just stated was when I see a man express emotion and most specifically with me, when you see me express emotion or tears or move into a moment of sadness or vulnerability, it brings you comfort in my strength to be able to do that. Mm. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, so rather than this is perfect, rather than me, my uh, initial responses um, growing up was to pull away, right? Ooh, this man, he's not going to be able to take care of me. He's not strong, whatever. Now it encourages me to lean in, Mm. lean in and serve you and support you and hold you um, just the way that you do for me Mm. when I am having emotional moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that, I think there's, there's this confusion when it comes to the masculine understanding the expression of emotion, because we have these conversations often and we're swimming in those waters of masculine and feminine polarity energies, and trauma-informed perspectives and all of that is that even when we look at the energies of the masculine and feminine, far too often, the logical side, the black and white comes in and says, oh, well, men are supposed to be forward. Men are supposed to be giving. Men are supposed to be the decision maker and the leader and and all of that. And it excuses the space necessary for the man to rest, rejuvenate, and revive in his emotion. So it's this very interesting and powerful balance, or I should say harmony, where the man does, we do, I want to give to you all the time, all the time. And we talked about this, I believe it was last week in our podcast, was that there is this necessary burden for the masculine to perform and to give and to serve his feminine all the time. We have, we never have too much to give. There's always room for us to give. And and this is the question we get off, and I want to address this here. There are so many and important moments to rest and rejuvenate and to express those emotions because we are so revving on an attitude and expression and a livelihood of giving, providing, protecting as the masculine. We do have to rest. We do have to be able to come down and say, you know what? I've had a really tough, shitty day, <laughs> right? Or it's been incredibly tiring. And this is what I need to do, which, which plays into the boundaries necessary for the masculine to speak up, knowing he needs the space in which to rest, rejuvenate, and express emotions like tears if it's having a really, really, really difficult day, um, which happens and is ultimately, and I want you to speak upon this if you're open to it is the, the, the healthy feminine space to move forward in that is to provide that support system. So when he does need to come down, so to speak, when he does need to enter into his feminine energy for just a little bit to express himself vulnerably with tears, with sadness, uh, whatever the case may be, that she is there to provide that support and to provide that understanding and that grace for him to be in that space, knowing that he's not going to be there for too long. I think that's an important distinction. Absolutely. So good. Um, Men are human beings too, and they have emotions and feelings too. And like who decided all of a sudden that they weren't allowed to express themselves. And I mean, that is part of the human experience. Like those feelings are there to be felt and, and not stored 
right? Because they begin to just like ferment in the body when they're not, where they're, when they're unprocessed and unreleased. And then that's where we get into symptomatics and physical ailments and things like that, because we're, we're living with so much pain and shame and, and sadness and unprocessed emotions, but, but providing space, like as the woman providing space for your partner, um, the masculine partner to be able to express himself and just seeing him as a human being too, that says, okay, this is his time. This is his time to process and release and let go because the more that he's able to release and get rid of all that, just crap, that baggage, the stuff that's weighing him down, the more space he then has to be able to take in new information for himself and come together to be a better partner in the relationship for you. Oh, beautifully. So well said. I love providing the new space, energetic space to take on more. Again, back to that necessary burden. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when I said, consider the weight and the burden of giving to the feminine. And oftentimes we're triggered by that. So, oh my gosh, it's burden. And so many times the feminine will want to relieve him of that burden. Oh my gosh, I don't want him to take on more or I'm too much, or I don't want to express things to him because he has so much that's on his plate. When in reality, we want that burden, just like we do in the gym, we must lift heavy weights in which to grow and transform. So to leverage that analogy, I think is really powerful here. I want to speak to something you said, I want to get into this, and I know you're super passionate about this. I think it's not an accident that the vast majority of heart issues, heart attacks, cardiac issues, health-related issues are directed toward the masculine because he's mm -hmm. carrying so much and yet doesn't have the space or doesn't think he has the space to be emotionally available Right, to express his emotions, to express his depression, to express his tears, his sadness, his frustration, his rage, mm -hmm. and do it in a safe space. And so he's carrying all this and pushing it down. And it's affecting, obviously, somatically, it's affecting his physical body. And we, we, we hear this often. I remember a quick story here. I had a high school science teacher who ran 10 miles a day. He was a marathoner, seemingly in the best health of his life and dropped dead on a run of a heart attack. And we later learned later, much, much, much later, I learned a little bit more about his life and what he was carrying and what he was doing at home and what he wasn't doing at home and, and how that was not expressed. And so we oftentimes look at the physicality of, of men and, and judge. And of course we, we can other side of men not taking care of themselves, men not eating right, men not working out and taking care of themselves in the, in the sense of that. And we'll have some issues there too. But I'd love to hear your perspective, because um, I know this is your area of expertise, on how much the trauma related to the unexpressed emotions is relating to the breakdown of the physical body. Mm, oh my gosh, you absolutely nailed it. And so like heartache, it's heartache. Mm. And um, I love how you brought the heart conditions and they are predominantly um, affected by the male population. Yeah, there, there's no coincidence with that. And if you can expand and, and be curious enough to open yourself up to, to link those things energetically, emotionally, and spiritually, like there is no accident. Like there is, everything is energy. Everything is communicated with frequency. And so if we're harboring a unprocessed sadness and grief and anger and shame and pain, and all of it's living right here, well, of course, this area of the body, the heart space is just going to take on and absorb all of that energy. And it's sad, it's stuck, it's stale, it's, it's unhealthy. And so the heart begins to... Uh, it takes a toll on the actual physical part of the body. Um, yeah, beautiful. It's wild. Once you can open yourself up to the idea of that, that there is perhaps a deeper meaning behind everything. Mm. Um, but that is a huge, huge link. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderfully said. Thank you, Paige, for, for leveraging your expertise in that area. I, I, I think I, I, I'm, I'm drawn and, um, intuitively drawn to say this is that pain and trauma and hardness and disappointment um, for the masculine is received in such a different way. Um, so we experience that trauma, right? And yet we have been programmed and told 
to just take it, right? Man up, push through it, rather than what we teach and coach is, we must work through it, right? The time is never going to heal those wounds, that only work heals those wounds. And this is, this is still somewhat so new. I know that my generation, right? My generation is really the first generation in which it has been okay to talk, <laughs> right? We've just seen in the last 50, 60, 70 years, um, organizations like AA, organizations you know, that, 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 are, that are treating the emotional and the psychological and the mental toughness, I should say the challenges, right? And to really crash into this idea that the masculine is the one that has to take it all on and suppress it. And that's just the way it is. And I want to really express to our, to our masculine population who's watching and listening that it's okay that you were hurt. It's okay that you were traumatized. It's not in the sense of it was okay that it happened. You know, we're, we're sending all the love and compassion and empathy toward that. But it's, it's okay for you to know that, that what was done to you and with you is one, <laughs> it's normal, right? And it has so much space in which to heal. And there are so many ways in which to do that. And when I, I, I said this recently, um, I posted on social media, I said, when the man heals, the world heals. When the man heals, the world heals. When the man steps forward and begins to lead himself, primarily through his own emotional and physical healing, everyone benefits, right? The feminine partner benefits, right? The children benefit. The world benefits, the careers, but the world begins to reshape and reform around his healing. Because if he is leading in that way, leading himself, and we've often heard that, I'd love to, for you to speak to this too, is we've, we've often heard that women who recognize men who put, their, put themselves forward in a healing way is so incredibly damned attractive. <laughs> <laughs> mm, right? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Mm, I heard that. Mm, yeah. What do you, what, what does that do as a representative of the feminine, the, the healthy feminine moving forward? What does that say to you when you do see, and not just, you know, relationship with me, but other men who are seeking that healing energy moving forward and expressing that sometimes in, in, in the tears, right? In mm -hmm. the, in the, in the emotion, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The more that he is going to be able to show up for himself in all ways, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, mentally, physically, then, then that just like proves to me that he's going to be able to hold me in all of those spaces safely, securely too. Yeah. Oh, I got I got to pause there. I got to pause there. That was so incredibly powerful. I'm going to, I'm going to try to rephrase it. Uh, just, just to re not rephrase it, but just to emphasize it. Cause it was so beautifully said Paige. What I heard you say is when the masculine is healing himself and moving forward in healing ways and, and addressing his pain and trauma, then you know that space is being provided to be protected, provided for, to be loved, honored, cherished, supported. Oh, mm -hmm. so good. So good. Yeah. yeah. It creates space for just, um, well, it's for him. He's harmonizing the both feminine and masculine energies in his body. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when he's doing his work, harmonizing his energies, and I'm doing mine, harmonizing my masculine and feminine energy, then together mm -hmm. we can harmonize together mm -hmm. and start to, uh, really play with the, that polarity who's stepping forward here and who's stepping forward now. And so, um, for, for those men that are listening, that are perhaps like, oh, I'm, I feel like I'm stuck in my masculine. I feel like I don't feel that it's safe to express. I want to provide encouragement and, and permission mm -hmm. for them to step forward, even if it's just an inch, even mm -hmm. if it's just a centimeter into their feminine energy and to just like start to feel. Mm -hmm start to use their words to express, just start mm -hmm. to just try that on. And it's going to be scary. Mm -hmm. It's going to be scary. Yep. And not everyone might receive you might, mm -hmm. might not everyone receive you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Because it's not a reflection of, of him expressing he's yep. doing the work by showing up for himself by using his voice and stepping forward. Mm. And so he will learn very quickly who is able to support both aspects of his masculine and feminine energy. Mm. 
by who is able to receive him. I love that. Love that. Mm, So good. So kind of bring this, this conversation to a close for now. Right. I think debunking grown men don't cry. Right. Actually grown men, if we want to say it, elevated, awakened, strong, powerful, masculine men cry. (laughs) It, It is a way in which to rejuvenate. Right. We've often said tears are a solution, never a shame. Tears are simply a full bodied expression of what's really going on and a need to get out. And so that's, that's a human quality. It's not a feminine quality. It's not a masculine quality. It's a human quality to be able to express and embody those emotions. Yes. It brings to mind the Tim McGraw song Mm. where he says, I don't know why they say that grown men don't cry. And it's this beautiful story. If you haven't heard it, I highly recommend pulling it up on YouTube or Spotify uh, by Tim McGraw. Um, It takes it through just like, you know, several verses in the chorus and essentially talking about all these moments that have brought him to tears and brought him Mm. to um, just express himself in a healthy way and Mm. uh, gives me goosebumps from the nineties, I think (laughs) nineties country. Mm. It's a powerful song. Powerful, powerful, powerful song. Yeah. So, so thank you so much, Paige, for bringing your feminine presence here into this conversation and, and understanding how important it is for men to express emotionally most, most specifically with tears, right? That it's absolutely okay. And we encourage all of the men and women who are watching and listening that it's, that it's natural and normal for that to occur. So I I want to, I want to kind of put a, a bow on this to say, Hey guys, men, if you're listening or watching this, We are having a powerful event this coming fall um, here in the Nashville area. We're holding a men's retreat. And if you're interested in knowing more about how to really cue into your concentrated, healthy, masculine presence, this is what we're going to be doing at this retreat. We're going to have plenty of masculine stuff. We're going to have fire. That's right. We're going to be outdoors. We're going to play. We're going to be dudes. Um, But we're also going to really dig into some of the pain and the trauma in which has kept us back in our careers, in our love life, in our sex life, uh, in our relationships with our children. And so um, I'm putting that out there to say, hey, if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about our men's retreat, it's coming up in September here in the Nashville area. So uh, yeah, send us a message. Uh, You can find us all over the socials. Our website is daring-deeply.com. If you're interested in knowing more about what we do um, here at Daring Deeply, Paige Stewart and David Lee, then we'd love to hear from you. So I think we're done for today. That was fun. Awesome. So much fun. Thank you, Paige. Love you, baby. Love you too. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.